Hello friends, and welcome to another stream. Uh, <clears throat> in this stream, as in so many others, I'm going to work on a project called GitUI, which is a terminal client for Git, written in Rust. Basically what the tin says. Uh, currently, I... Or rather, you're joining me in the middle of, a, of an issue uh, that I'm working on. Uh, if we have a look over in the issues of the repository, uh, let's see, where is it? Ah, wait a second, didn't I take a note of the 57? Yes, this is the one. So, um, what this tries to do is basically change the way that key bindings are uh, set up. <laughs> Hello, Bear Duda in the chat. Um, key bindings are set up in the application. Currently, they're hard-coded, uh, but we what we want to try to be able to do is rebind everything, basically through a config file. And this is... Uh, partly because some, me included, want uh, basically Vim bindings. And it's just a nice feature to have, basically. Uh, so I've already started some of the work. And I think that I have in my notes some way that I thought I could solve this. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. So, let's head over to the... Or there, I can actually run the application once. Uh, just to show what it looks like. Uh, I can also see that I haven't upgraded to 144.2, but that's probably fine for now. Uh, let's see. Yes. Let's build this and see how we do. Not very well. Oh, right. That's probably because I don't have any running code yet. <laughs> that's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Okay, so, oh, this has not, oh, sorry, that's the wrong key shortcut. Let's bring it back. Here we go. Uh, oh, okay, this is already oh, right down here, I think. Let me just get, no, not this. Color screen font. No? Hmm. These fonts are not the same size. But they should be? Why is this not scaling properly? Well, this is a fun exercise. Uh, okay. Let's quit this and see if we can get it working correctly. Um, that one. There we go. Uh, right. Let's. Oh, everything is. Uh, what's this then? Uh, sure. Enable Rust plugin. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, so this is fun. Uh, let's see. Yes, restart. Restart. 
3 opening files. Let's double check the plugins. Uh, let's re enable Rust. Ignore unknown features. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting ready. Right, okay. So, um, I have a bit of a problem. Um, because I kind of like the the existing structure that is already set up where we use this key event, uh, no rather the do, 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 yeah key event um, uh, struct, which is part of cross term, which means that it's it's easy to pattern match against what is actually input by the user. So I kind of want to reuse that logic, but I also don't want to introduce too much um, configuration to make it work. Because that means if whenever you want to add a new keyboard shortcut, if you have to add it, uh, or rather a new command inside of the, the uh, application, if you have to add uh, like an entry to three or four different places, you're probably going to, it's just going to create a lot of overhead that I don't want to introduce just to be able to do this. So <laughs> this is where the interesting um, bits come in. So inside of this key bindings, what I've tried to do is I've created a struct called key bindings, which contains all the different commands that the application understands, which is basically just a copy of the old, um, the old, uh, the old definition over here. So for example, uh, with no mod modifying keys, if you press a one, um, go go tab one, for example. So for uh, close, the close command is signified by the escape key, or we could have something with modifiers. For example, this, uh, if you want to amend the commit, uh, you press A with the modifier whoop, control. If we do a save in here, does it? Okay, maybe if we. Oh, I thought it would. Um... Anyway. So that's basically what I've what I've uh, redone here. But what I also try to do is make it serializable with Serdi. Uh. In a somewhat straightforward way, so you want the file to be human readable and also editable. So we can have some kind of, or ideally we won't, don't want any kind, any kind of, um, uh, what, you call, what should I call it? Um, complex or obscure way to edit it. So the problem with these uh, key event things, they are partly at least, um, defined by using bit flags. So if you hold down the control key, cross term uses an internal bit flag structure to, to signify that. So that would mean that you kind of had to use like a bit flag thing in the config and we don't want that. So we have to translate from some kind of config, um, I don't want to say syntax, but some kind of config format to a different uh, or, or and into the key event thing for cluster. So that's what I've been trying to do down here where, let's see, I tried using proxy classes and stuff inside of uh, Surti to make it work, but um, uh, Surti turned out to be a bit more clever than I anticipated, <laughs> so it didn't work very well. <clears throat> Uh, so what it's complaining about over here in the, oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it's complaining about over here is basically that I don't have implemented the right traits, uh, because I'm using the proxy type, uh, feature in 30 where 
if you have a type that you want to serialize, but Serdy isn't in uh, isn't uh, implemented for that type, you can use a different type, which looks the same, has the same fields, and say that this my own defined type is basically the same as this other type that doesn't include uh, implement Serdy, but you can use this as a template and serialize the other thing. So I tried doing that, but the Sort of ignores the proxy type when everything uh, when the serialization runs. So my trick of trying to make it uh, use uh, use the proxy class and use some custom uh, custom uh, converters didn't work out. So now let's jump into actually doing some stuff here. So we got all the definitions set up, and we've also yeah. So these are just copies of everything inside of here. All of these commands, basically. And I also set up this thirty attributes, which says that instead of using the key event. Serialization, if there is any, uh, I can do this. So this, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah. So if you have Serdy included uh, in cross term, the credit the Serdy feature, it will implement serialize and deserialize. So that works automatically. But what I'm saying here is instead of using the built-in one, use this type or this struct instead, which I've defined down here somewhere. This which has the same fields as the the correct one uh, or, or the, the cross term one, but I can control some some parts of the serialization or that's the intent at least. And if this, uh, for example, if amend commit is not defined uh, when deserializing, uh, just use this default, um, this default uh, value instead. So all values will have a have a or all proper, uh, fields will have a value. <clears throat> so that's wasn't defined in here at the moment. So if it, if if amend is not set in the config file, it will go here amend commit and then set this as the default value instead. So that's not what it's complaining about. Um, so this defines that key event def is actually the serialization definition of key event. And this is where a lot of the stuff uh, <laughs> starts making trouble. Because what I tried to do is use this keys struct, um, which is defined down here as a kind of proxy type, you might say. So whenever, <laughs> whenever you serialize key event definition or key event def, uh, don't serialize this class or this struct rather. What you actually want to do is convert this struct into keys, which is defined here, by using uh, into, I think. So create a keys from the key event def and serialize keys. And when you deserialize, deserialize into keys and then use a key event def from to serialize, uh, to, to convert it back. So this defines what the structure should look like when it's serialized, while this is the, the key event def is the actual type that's being serialized and deserialized. The problem is, however, I've also defined this as the um, definition of this other struct, which is, uh, it's remote because it's not local to this project. It's the remote in, in, as it's in defined in cross term. <laughs> so when Surdy tries to deserialize anything, it deserializes into the keys struct, as I, as I said, it should do. Then it tries to um, tries to 
use a key event from keys to convert the deserialized key struct to a key event struct. And uh, that does not work. <laughs> so that's what it's complaining about here. So key event does not uh, uh, implement the trait called from key, uh, key bindings keys. And I tried cheating my way around this where I would um, implement into for keys, but I just didn't like it th like that, so that didn't work. So, um, okay, I have two possible solutions for this. The first one being that I deserialize into key event def, basically just remove this, and it should work fine. Then I convert everything from from this to the key event. But the question then becomes, should I just, shouldn't I just, hmm. No, it doesn't. Hmm. The 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 final solution that I want to reach is having this key binding struct have key event fields. And these key event fields can be used directly. But I don't want any complex steps to get this working. I want it to be as easy as just if I wanted to add a, add a new key binding, basically, I could just do this and rename um, this part right here and this part right here. And that should be it. Yeah, and, and of course, implement uh, this function. That's that's already three things to do, but it should be pretty obvious what you need to do. You just you copy one of the previous ones, and you basically copy this uh, other thing too. Should be pretty straightforward to define the the pattern that's used in this file. But actually, getting that working is not as uh, easy as I hoped it would be. Uh, I did take a note, make a note to myself last time I looked at this. I'm just going to have a look in my book where I said maybe to use tuple structs. If we head over here, sorry about the bright screen, uh, getting some more of that shortly. Uh, let's see, docs rs 30. this one because uh, maybe I should have a look over here rather yes because what you can do is use one of these tuple struct use three step process serialize Serialize field and end. Uh, 
Oh, it basically has the same process as it's... Yeah. Hmm. So this is basically what I was looking at last time, where I was looking into custom deserialization logic to be able to deserialize everything. The thing is, in the current application, if we have a look at one of the, um, so if we look at stashing, for example, at line two to three, this is how we do pattern matching at the moment, where we get an event, uh, which is a cross term event of some kind, I think. Yeah, a cross term event, and it has a key, <clears throat> which represents the key event. And then we match on that key event. So if it matches, for example, stashing uh, stashing save, which is defined, what well, was currently defined in here. Um, uh, let's see, save. Here we go. So it matched th basically this uh, lowercase s. This part of the code would be run. But the problem is now. I, I kind of want to keep keep this possibility. So instead of saying this, you could probably just re reference to key bindings, some instance of key bindings, and dot uh, save stash, and it would auto uh, do the pattern matching against that. So I need these to be key events. Hmm. So let's see if I remember this correctly. So if we see, look, have a look at the field attributes. Whenever we use with, which is documented here, uh, we'll use module serialize and as a serialize with function and deserialize. Right. So when using this with, we can define our own custom deserialize and serialize functions, basically. Which is fine. Except that it's a hassle to implement. <laughs> Um, what I want to serialize basically is this keys struct. Which contains a key code, which is uh, just defined in, um, in cross term. So it's in, uh, it's an enum, which uh, just defines a set of different uh, keys on the keyboard and a modifier and the modifier can have any of any of these combinations <clears throat> so whenever writing this in the config you just write you know, I want something to be control alt and F for example and that will work out The alternative would be to just define some kind of string inside of the config that will be parsed whenever we load it, which is not ideal, but it's a, but it's a possibility. Uh, let's see.
So if you want to serialize a struct, you need to use this. You need to use this kind of logic where you serialize each step. Okay, this might actually... A visitor is instantiated. Uh, the deserialize calls methods on the visitor in order to construct the desired type. Here is a visitor. Deserialize a primitive i32 from a variety of types. Okay. Manually, um, manually implementing, yes. Implement is deserialized for field. Which is where is field defined? Here, okay. Yeah, so you got an enum field, and you. Visit string. Then you match up with that, okay. Do I need to use the visitor? To construct an assembly type. Tends to be more complicated, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, as a first step, maybe we should just maybe we should just um, leave this use the key event serialization as default and then tweak it afterwards. That will probably yeah. Okay, let's just do that instead. Okay, uh, let's see. Yes, this is correct. Uh, I just want to commit this so it's easy to roll back afterwards. Uh, this looks correct for now. And we've turned on the sorority feature. Yes, okay. So let's just um, feature to cross term. see let's just do all this in one big one add three bindings there we go okay 
Uh, so we're basically going to just going to do a replace here. Let's have a look. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. With key, key event def oop, def colon space. Replace that with nothing and go. There we go. Uh, nope, no, 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 no. Uh, that's what this one I want to do. Okay. Now let's just do a run and see where we stumble. Yeah, and also I should probably just delete everything down here. So let's skip past this and just do delete everything after this, like so. Do a check. Okay, we're um, closing in on something. Uh, let's do line one forty four. See what that is. Uh, can uh, infer type of keys specifically? Okay, so apparently the Rust plugin is able to see what it is. But not the compiler, that's interesting. It should be key bindings. Oh. Come on. There we go. Unused imports, key code, and key modifiers. Yeah, that's probably right. There we go. Now let's move on to the meat of the thing, which is <laughs> all of these. Uh, did I scroll past one of the compile points? Uh, nope, here we go. Right, let's start with, oh, okay. That doesn't look right. That's old. Oh, wait a second. Oh. These didn't get removed. Here we go. And this one, this one. And that should be all done. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, let's do status RS. At this point, we just need to fix all these references to where I actually like to start from the beginning of these. Uh, let's go all the way up here and rather start with app RS. Line 167. Right, so we need to instantiate one of the key bindings ah yes in theory that should be able to do here All right uh, let's see not here uh, but uh, was this the first one 67 yeah so instead this should be self dot key bindings and this is where I messed up the thing over let's see here these should all be public I think 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 yeah Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just make a macro out of this. So, 
I'd rather go to the start, insert pub before it, and go to down. Are there more, are a better way to do this? Maybe, but I'm gonna do, use this one. And we're done. So not too bad. Uh, yes. So let's go back to where we were. And this should be toggle something, I would think. Toggle my time. Ah, yes, next tab. That's what I renamed it. Right, so let's move this, move this over. It's gonna complain for some reason. Expect key event found mute app. Wait a second, what's. Yeah, Impel app, yeah, that's right. And we get a self. Why is it complaining? Is it actually the... Let's see if the compiler will be complaining too. Oh yeah, it seems so. Let's have a look at the top here. Expect one of 10 possible tokens. But not a punctuation mark apparently. Okay. Yeah, probably because it's not. A, can I find unit struct or unit? Uh, no, okay, that's not one. Hmm. So it could pattern match against this old thing because those were. Constant, yeah. Okay, this, my tactic doesn't work anyway. So, <laughs> that's ruled out now. So, instead, let's try to think of a way this could be solved that's better. So my thinking is, we can't, we can't use pattern matching directly. So what we instead could do is use an if, I guess, I will admit it's not as elegant. But that might be the way we need to do it. And just use a function on key bindings to see if the event matches the key binding we want. Hmm.
So what we want to do is go here and let's just take these two files, delete the changes, go back in here, go to key bindings, and we want to change this. So instead of doing all this, I think we just want to use this. The question is, do we want to reuse this key code definition? Which is kind of nice, actually. This might lead to some weird syntax, but I think we can live with it. Yeah, so we want to use this, and instead of the bitwise operations, we just want to use this enum that I've defined for the for the modifiers, I think that would be a nice way to do it. Uh, let's let's see. I think we're just gonna delete this. I'm gonna keep this. Uh, we will keep this around for now. And also this, I think, yeah. Uh, the key event definition goes away, like so. Uh, this is all just implementation details. Um, we still want to remove the width thing, uh, but this time maybe we just do until the comma, like so. Replace that with nothing. That should take care of the multi-thing line too. That's all cleaned up, nice. We will still want this default thing to go because then we can deserialize to it like a default thing. But we want to change these key events. Uh, so let's do this. Here we go. Yeah, let's change these to keys, like so. And that also means that instead of the file called keys, <clears throat> well, you could make a point that this should probably just live inside of keys now. <laughs> Let's just move this. Uh, let's see, we put this at the top, I think. And these need to be changed to an easy way to do this. No, I don't think so. Oh man, this is gonna be a lot of work. A lot of repetitive work, that is. Well, for all the no mod ones, that should be pretty straightforward. Uh, let's have a look at these two things. So these transform keys into key event. There might be some useful logic in there, but it's not going to help us now. Okay, let's try... Okay, uh, let's start with... Let's see if we can make this a macro too. So first we need to find 
just do this, yeah. Jump one, delete a word, and another one. Okay, so it reformats, that's not helpful. Okay, so now we're, okay, now we're, we're uh, gonna be, yeah. Um, here we go. Start here. Let's find this. Yeah. Hmm. This needs to be keys. This will be keys. Where character. Oh crap, that doesn't work when I do it like this. Character needs to be key code and uh, modifiers need to be modifiers none. No, not that one. That one. That one. No, come on. There we go. There we go. Now we're happy. Because this is what we need to create. So let's see. Let's try this. Uh, key event like this. Choose our keys. Go on. Start a line. Change this into keys. Start with this one. Character. Oh, character. Like so. Jump to the end. Delete one, comma, modifiers. Colon, modifiers. Colon, and none. Space. Closing brackets. Now let's see if it works. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Uh, forgot about one thing. Oh no! <laughs> uh, let's go here and just reset this file. I forgot about something complete. Very important. Let's have a look again. Okay, let's start over.
this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, this one, this one. Not this one, because this is special. Uh, so let's do this manually. Should be too much work. Change this. Uh, keys. This should be a brace instead. Uh, character. But then we actually have a modifier. So when we say modifiers, uh, we want this to just be modifiers and a shift. We change this to one of these, and that works. This one is standard, so is this, and this. And if we do this, we get some scrolling going. Yep, 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 yep. Let's do this manually. We do this maybe. Those were all of them. Nice. <clears throat> all right. So we got these going. Then we have the key bindings thing. Uh, these need to be imported. So let's fix that. Uh, none of these actually. Uh, so let's see, are we not using? Yeah. It's not public, is it? No. <laughs> uh, this needs to be pub. Uh, so should this, I think. But why are we defining all these? In different place. If they actually belong to this. 
Uh, this is just cross-pollination all over the place. <laughs> Gonna do this instead. I just decided. Yep. And then we are going to have a look at. Yeah, do we need these anymore? I don't think so. What does Surdy say for default field attributes? Uh, default. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so supports this straight out of the box. So just let's just do uh, for every line substitute. Uh, yeah, I should probably find just doing keys. Err. Let's just try star. No, uh, dot multiple. And then we need one of these and just replace that with oh no oh no, no, no we just don't need to remove that that's we're gonna keep those All right uh just remove it but we're gonna confirm it first Okay, so these are all defined out here. That's good. And the last thing we need to put in then, I think, is a function to basically find a match. So I think we're going to receive, hmm, let's call it matches. And we can just borrow ourselves. Hmm. Or maybe the matches thing should be on the uh, keys part itself, maybe. So the keys can tell if it matches. Yeah, that's probably better. Er, not necessarily better, but yeah. Let's do that. So we're gonna... Impl keys. function that's called matches we can borrow ourselves and we need a cross term I think we just need key event in here straight up um, yeah so we need to call this uh, key event and you're gonna just get back a bool saying if it's matches or not Let's see. So we're getting a key event, and we need to somehow uh, translate that key event into a Oh, 
let's see. I think I have this here. From key event, yes. So, if we get a key event, we get the correct modifier, and we just insert the character, right? So, let's grab this, all 36 lines of it, and just paste it in below here, I think. That should be good. Do this. Uh, and then we see, say, let's call this keys. And that's not going to be a keys from key event, like so. And then we're just going to return that keys dot character. Is the same as self character. And keys dot mm, modifiers is the same as self dot modifiers. Yeah, let's try that, see how that works out. Uh, let's do another check. Okay, so it looks like... Right, right, uh, we're getting some errors here, over here. And that is because of different casings. <clears throat> this is shift. Uh, let's see. This control. That should be all of those. Let's have another check. Okay, three ninety-nine. Oh, I called it control. Right, control. There we go. Okay. Then we got another error at 178. Oh, I don't have a um, partial eek for modifiers. Can I just derive that? Can I not? There we go. Do another check. Okay, now we're getting closer. Uh, let's see. We're getting some import warnings. Let's just clean those up. Uh, no, I don't need to tell this one. Yeah. And then instead of keys. Yeah, this is basically just an empty file at this point, so let's just delete that. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's see. 
cancel. Yeah, we'll come back to deleting it after. Because now the fun stuff is beginning where we need to change all these. So this is a very interesting uh, stream, I guess. <laughs> it's just me jumping around the applications, deleting a lot of um, things. Uh, let's see. Tab toggle. So this should now instead be, yeah, okay. Wait a second. This needs to be changed in a lot of ways. <clears throat> So what we want to do now essentially is if self key bindings and this is the thing still we need Should we still make these public? Yeah, I guess so. I'll just do this, I think. There we go. Key bindings dot next tab matches K. And if it does, let's run this logic. Uh, what's it complaining about here? Oh, right, uh, necessary credit. Jumping between languages is not always easy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so basically this, I need to repeat. Uh, let's just spring all this actually. else paste and this should instead be previous tab or oh, come on uh, this one self key bindings uh, pre tab windows this is just a workaround that we currently have uh, probably get fixed sometime soon uh, yeah then we're gonna run this and then we're gonna take this line paste it in here we're gonna have this here So, uh, toggle command bar. This is just a simple else class. Let's see how we're doing. <laughs> ah, this is a lot. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, this has to be too far. Just a ton of errors. Okay, let's have a look at line 62. So this goes in closed, it says. Uh, guessing that's because of our new check here. Let's see, what do we got? So this closes this one, but we don't close the outer one. There we go. That should clear up some things. Okay. Let's go back here and try that again. Well, we cut down on the number of errors. That's something. One eighty nine. Uh, let's see. If this is not supposed to be in here, is it? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Top command bar. I don't think so. I think this should be like. This needs update empty like so, and this should be like this. Is that right? Uh, let's see in um, let's see in here. Yeah, there's the else cluster basically just have needs update is um, to be empty. Okay, so that looks right. Let's go back to our code. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Next one up is line 316. Okay, so it matches exit. basically. So instead, this would be if self the key bindings dot exit matches E. Yes. Run the block like so. Then we got three, four, six. Right, so let's just remove these, I think, first. So if self.keybindings tab one matches K, Set tab zero. Maybe, maybe. There we go. Uh, let's just do this. No, 
Well, let's just do this actually. Here we go. Uh, this should be tab two, two, and two. And so should this. Just be three and three. Uh, what did I do now? Oh, wait, this one. Uh, this should be three. This should be four. There we go. have we got this should be all the changes needed in rapid rs let's have a look oh this can't be good we'll have a look at that after i think let's scroll up here and have a look um ooh, right 108 oh, that's not what we want oh no, no 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 this is not what we want at all Okay, there we go. Let's see, 192. New flags is not found in scope. Huh, that's interesting. To find right here. That's outside of this scope. I'm just going to assume this is, that's an error for now and move on to line 276. Yeah, so this is basically the same thing. So let's, uh, no, let's jump to this, remove that, go back, remove this, and say, Self. Right, okay, here we come trouble because we don't have access to app from here. <laughs> How do we solve this then? We don't have access to app, the app um, struct. Because each, um, the whole application is structured in a way where all the UI components, or I say UI, yeah, well, UI components are structured in a tree. But each part of the tree does not know about its parent. So at this point, I'm inside one of the subcomponents, you might say. And it does not know about the abstract, the, the root of the tree. So the problem becomes that this cannot look up uh, look into the app dot key bindings to find out which of these uh, which of the key bindings key bindings this is which is annoying so we basically need to find a better way or a proper way to structure this and I'm a bit uncertain of how to do it mm -hmm. The simple solution here would be some kind of global, but I really don't want to have a struggle with all that. So, uh, 
that's not what we want to do at all. One solution could be passing down the key bindings struct in the event thing, in the event handler, so that it could look up all the events. Feels kind of weird to do that though. But that would be a solution. The optimal solution would be for each component to be able to basically define their own events. But how do we easily load all that? Then that becomes the hard part. Hmm. That's an interesting conundrum because events at this, or rather the key bindings definition goes from being something constant defined by the application to being something loaded dynamically at startup. And that brings with it a whole, all kinds of problems. Hmm. Might this be the right point at which to look into, uh, let's see, crates, lazy static. I've only seen this used a few times and I'm, uh, what's it called? Like this? There we go. A macro for declaring lazily evaluated statics and rust. That kind of sounds like what I want. First exit to hashman initializes it. So it's called hash map. And it does all this. Any further exit to hash map which just returns to computed value. Hmm, let's have a look in the docs. Expression gets evaluated and stored internally. <laughs> if you have multiple A's, that depend on each other. A return to do reference to the same object. The problem that is needs to there's some static ref variables that generally the same property as a static variable. Any type that uh, in them needs to fulfill the sync trait. If the type has a destructor, then it will not run when the process exits. So sync means I hope you realize this means just me <laughs> instead of not too clever. It is saved to share references be between threads. All right. Um,
So it basically needs to be sync. Which means it's it's thread safe. And in a kind of way it is, in that it doesn't really change after loading. Just feels kind of weird to put it in a static variable global for the whole application. Not inside the actual application object but, uh, or the struct. But on the other hand, this is not really shared among all the components as much as it is just the, the root of the application. This I guess I need to do this then, but then keys also need to define these. <laughs> ah, aha, uh, sure. This is, no, I don't know if this is gonna work. Well, mostly because this is not send nor sync. So, that means it all breaks down, I guess. Hum, 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 hum. Uh, what's it called again when it's a... Uh, tw -tw -tw -tw. It's a... Hmm. Right, so this <laughs> this ended up deadlocking again for me. Uh, wow, okay. I think I'm actually not going to get much closer to a solution at the end of this. Uh, this is basically just...
I'm not really sure how to pass that down through an elegant solution other than having um, the event function I need some way of matching some way of matching a command which is known by the component to a dynamically loaded key binding. That's what's going to be difficult to Uh, to make it working properly. Hmm. In theory, each component could load its own key configuration or, or key bindings from a file, but that's just not sustainable. And yeah, it's not just not going to work in the long run. That's a simple, simple fact of it. But a component knows what commands it needs to to run or, or to um, to react to. So how does it easily match those commands against the events that are passed on by cross term? That's the difficult part. Ooh, I think I kind of know. Let's see. This event. Uh, where is this defined? That's a cross term event. And if it's a key, then we check the key codes. What other key, mouse, or resize? Okay. So I'm thinking that there might be some Let's say there were some kind of lookup you might say where it does hmm Okay, I think I might have a solution to this. What I need to know, though, I need to know, though, is where does this? Okay, so component is defined inside of here. Okay, so let's have a look for component, maybe. Yes. No. Ah, components, you're right, that's a file. Uh, okay, so where is... Where is component itself defined? There we go, in mod, of course, yes. So this takes an event and we need to redefine this event. That's what we need to do. So we change this event to be our own kind of event, which can contain either a command or 
a cross term event. And if it contains a command, then we execute that command. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think this is the right thing to do. Let's have a look in the EFRS2 just for... Does this define any kind of event thing? Yes, it does. Uh, does it... Um, impl component? No. It just has this event thing. Where is this used? In just the one place. Right. And that is to handle events. So we get an input event. And if, it, if the input event is a state event, then we do that. And if it's not, we pass it on, apparently. Wait, where does this match? Yeah. That's the input event. So if it is state, and if it's not state, it is this kind of event. Right, then we pass that on to app that event. And if it's an input event, we do the whole shtick. Right. Okay, I think that might actually work. So, let's go back a bit uh, to here. No, here. I don't think we want to change anything before we get here, actually. And the question becomes, do we want to find that in... I think we want to find that inside of the app file. So we have a uh, public enum called app event. The type name event is already defined in this module. Really? Is the rigid cross term event okay? So we're just gonna do this for now and say that the enum event it can either be a command. of something or an input event of key event, I think. Uh, what was it again? Uh, where was it? The no, it's in here. Oh, it's cross term event. Right, so. Okay, 
is either one of these two. And then we can impl uh, is it into or from you should implement? I think it's into. Is that right? I want you to avoid implement into and implement from instead. Okay, the other way around. <laughs> uh, do, let's delete this one and import from. Hello, Sam. Who? Into needs to type into for something. Yes, but I um, I want to implement from instead as per the documentation where. It... Oh yeah, right. Uh, yeah, because you get into for free if you implement from. Uh, let's see. From, cross term. Event. And then we. Oh. Uh, from. Event, which is a cross term. Event. So either this cross term event matches one of the commands defined by the application. And if it does, so basically if event matches a defined command, return event command recognized command known um, if not return event Input event of event. <clears throat> so this is basically what I want to do. But then we need to find the commands and we need to basically map between them. So my current thinking is that we might want to do in s instead of here, maybe. Maybe this should be an enum with all the possible commands. And then a map between the enum and a keys thing. Hmm. And then if a command is not found inside of the map, we can just use the default implementation maybe. Hmm. 
<laughs> well, that completely changes how I handle this. Kind of debating if I like that I'm not making it a type safe anymore. So what I'm saying is that if I recognize some kind of keys, I should get a command back. Eesh. Yeah, I'm still stuck here. <laughs> still pretty stuck. You know what? I'm actually going to end it here for tonight. Um, I'm pretty much running in circles. And I'm not really sure how to solve this yet. I thought I had a solution, but I'm not really happy with any of them so far. And... Yeah, I just need to think of a way to solve this in a somewhat elegant way. And it's currently not surfacing for me. So to basically reiterate the problem is at startup of the application, I want to, dyna to to load a file, a config file with key bindings. So you can define that uh, to go up in the application, I want to press the up arrow or I want to press uh, K, for example. I, w I want to be able to define that in a file. So I need some way to, do, to kind of do a map there between a command, go up, for example, and a keystroke, K, for example, or shift Y for some reason, totally up to the user to decide. Then inside the application, I need to be able to recognize when the application receives a an event from the terminal, basically, that a key has been pressed. It has to be able to respond to that key press. The problem is the whole app is structured in a tree structure where each component or visual part of the application is inside of another component all the way up to the root node, which is the application itself. Each component doesn't know about its parent. So if I define, if I load the, the key config and store it in the application, the subcomponents beneath the application will, will not know about those key bindings. So I need some way to access them from all levels of the tree, the component tree, but without introducing ugly code. <laughs> the simple solution is to pa just pass down the key bindings from the top root and all the way down through all the levels. While that is possible, it's still a bit strange that the each level of the application or the each level of the component tree needs to know about all the impossible events that might occur. It should only know about its own commands that it knows how to to execute. So, for example, uh, inside of this component specifically, we have. Uh, let's find the right place. Ah, oh, here we go. Um, do, 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 do. For example, this has a command called open commit. The whole application should know about open commit, only this specific component knows about open commit. So when this checks if it should handle the event that's been passed down, it shouldn't really have to know about uh, or get to know about all the other events that might occur uh, or rather all the other commands that might occur. It should only get only care about these commands that, that it's, it self defines. So how does 
the component only but know, know about its own commands, but still know about the config, which is global, but the commands are local. So how do you unite those two worlds? That is the question. Today, in the current, the current solution is just these constants, which are defined at start or at compile time. But I want to basically dynamically load these constants. And that's where the problem and uh, that's where the problems begin, because this is just today a, a constant key binding. So this is just uh, certain, let's see. Oh yeah, it's not fun anymore. Um, this is just lowercase a. So this just checks, is this event that comes, that is passed in here, is it lowercase a? And if yes, do this thing. But this doesn't, doesn't shouldn't check uh, anymore if it's lowercase a, it should check if, it, if the command is status stage all, whatever that key thing might be. So I think I need to pass some kind of command down the tree. Yeah, anyway, I need to rethink this a bit and come back to it later. So um, for those of you who are watching me rambling, refactoring and not getting anywhere, I guess thank you <laughs> for sticking with me. And um, if everything goes to plan, I'll stream some more next uh, Sunday at uh, the same time, which is 10 in the evening Europe Oslo time zone and whenever that might be in your part of the world so at the moment that's uh, GMT plus 2 I think yes so 10, 10 o'clock in the evening GMT plus 2 next Sunday maybe I have a solution maybe I'm still stuck only time will tell Stay tuned for, uh, stay, or tune in next Sunday to find out. Well, friends, thank you for joining, hang out with me, and um, have a good night or whenever you are.